G'day, welcome back to the channel. This is the Radio Master T8 Lite, the $40 radio from Radio Master. How do they do it? $40? How can you make a radio for such a very low price? Well, let's take a look inside and find out. I've already taken the screws out. Let's take the back off it. There we go. There's not a lot to see, is there? <laughs> First thing that strikes me is we've got two little lithium polymer batteries here, single 1S lithium polymer batteries. That's interesting, and it's worth remembering that lithium polymer batteries don't like being left fully charged or fully discharged. So I would say to you, if you're going to buy this radio, be careful about battery management. Don't just charge it up and leave it fully charged for three or four weeks. You might find those batteries puff. They're not, and lithium polymers, not very resistant to puffing when left in those conditions. Also, if you run it fully flat, make sure you bump a bit of charge into it. Keep at least two bars of the little um, dial on the front, the little illuminated battery gauge. Keep at least two or three of those illuminated if you're gonna store it for any length of time and check it from time to time, because this is a soft power button and it means that there's always a certain amount of what we call parasitic drain on the battery. So if you leave it for a long time, it may actually drain the batteries even though you charged it to a reasonable state before you put it in the drawer. So what else have we got in here? There's a single circuit board there. Um, and on the back of it, there's not much except a whole bunch of connectors and mm, those horrible, those horrible ribbon cables that cause so much problems with the jumper, the original jumper. Uh, remember that? And the ribbon cables failed or the connections failed. They were terribly unreliable. I hope that that's not going to happen here. When done properly, ribbon cables or flat flex cables, as they're more correctly termed, are pretty reliable. Let's hope that's the case here. But if you live in an environment where there's a lot of um, sulfur in the air and things, you may find I don't know. We'll find out over time. Time will tell what happens here. But hmm. so let's dive a bit deeper, shall we? Let's rip in and see what's on the other side of that circuit board. And there we go. The main thing to notice is there is a microcontroller, but look how small it is. It's a tiny little thing. Can't get it much smaller than that. You don't need anything any more powerful on this radio because it doesn't have to do much. All it does is turn the analog voltage from the stick units into a pulse drain, which is then sent out to, or it turns it into binary information, which is then sent out to the little radio frequency module over here. This is where all the RF goodness is. And it's just the uh, Texas Instruments 2500 chip um, with a little amp on the end, fires it out to an antenna over here. And we see the antenna is just a sleeved dipole, which we're so familiar with seeing all over the place. That's what's inside those rubber ducky antennas anyway, is just the sleeve dipole. There's the active element, the, the, the shiny bit down there. And then we have a sleeve here to counterpoise. So that's it. That's really all you're getting for your money. There's not a lot over this side here, back by the microcontroller. Got another chip here. I think this is probably power management. Haven't looked. There's your buzzer, beep beep, a few passives. So what they're doing is they're using two of these cells. Let me just pull out a bit so that everything's in context. Ooh, here we go, they're using two of these single cell lithium polymer batteries and they're just wired in par parallel. I've metered out the battery connection where the batteries plug in and they've just wired these in parallel so you've got twice the capacity, same voltage. So all I have to do is take the 4.2 volts, drop it down to 3.3 volts with a simple linear regulator to power the components that do all the hard work. So that's it. There's really not much in a $40 radio, is there? Uh, the build quality is adequate, perfectly adequate for for $40, you don't expect uh, magic, and this will probably be more than serviceable. As I say, the only issue is whether these um, flat flex connectors hold up over time, and as I say, only time will tell. But uh, there was problems with the early jumpers, I think we remember. We'll see what happens, whether that becomes a problem in the future for this radio, but I really doubt it. I, I really doubt it. So that's it. Thanks for watching. You got questions, comments? Go to the question comedy bit. I'll do my best to answer them if I can, and uh, add your own thoughts. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Does it still go? Yes! Mission accomplished.